On 11.16 SEN, Chasing Birdies with Mark Allen and Craig Spence for St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. Seven minutes past eight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Chasing Birdies. Hey, how about this? Tonight we're live on Facebook. Head to facebook.com slash SEN1116, and you'll get a look at the 1999 <laughs> Australian Masters champion, Craig Spence. Marco, good to be in. How are you? Yeah, I'm really well, Spark. Hey, I'm looking That's forward good. to having a chat with Mark Hayes as well from Golf Australia. Go to golf.org.au to read some of his stuff. But uh, the US Amateur is on at the moment. The Women's Amateur is on a Kionga at yep. the moment, our Amateur Championship. And a little bit else going on in the world there as well. The quiz a little bit later, thanks to sportsbet.com.au. We haven't had a winner for a while, bud. We haven't no. had a winner for quite some time. So we've got to sort that out, get back to our winning ways. But 94291116, that is the open line number for Get Wines Direct. Give us a yell anytime you like and have a chat about the USPGA. A funny little one just before we start on the PGA. Yeah. I was reading about the US Amateur because there were a few Aussies. As we heard from Hazy, I was interested in how some of the guys were going. Yeah. And I read at the bottom there that one of the players – Caddy had laid his clubs, the the players' clubs, like a carry bag. Bag must have laid it on the side of a hill somehow, or maybe maybe he his was a stand bag with his stand. Yeah. And, what a fall a over! Bit, so, yeah, it's fallen over, but it's fallen over and run down the hill into a lake. It did not the whole thing, and it got me thinking. <laughs> it got me thinking. <laughs> is anything crazy like that? I remember once I had my wife caddying for me. Yeah. And I'm putting towards the hole, and the and the stick is stuck oh, in the hole. How scary is it, that? It won't come out. She pulls so hard, she pulls the hole out of the the, the whole cup, cup out. The cup out of the hole. <laughs> and we had what the butt do? No, what the butt do? I wasn't a very good putter, Mark. Oh, you know that. <laughs> but she had to. We had to get a rules official to come oh. and stick the cup back in the hole. How was it the panic? Ten minutes. How was the panic in her oh, yeah. face? Oh yeah, as she it... thought she'd cost me any chance. <laughs> It was a qualifier for a nationwide event. Oh, you're kidding me. So did she you get thought, in? Oh, she thought we are out. Did you get in? Uh, yeah, I did. You were pretty I good at those qualifiers, weren't you? I think I, I, think I did get in that one. Or, or that's let's one just the... say I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's one of the great things about the US Tour, isn't it? Not many people know that every Monday there is yeah. a... A pre queue, it's four spots. There might be 160 people turn up, which means if you're not in the first five groups, you've no chance because yes. it quite often blows up and the greens get disgusting. But that is one of the great things. I think, I'm not sure how many four spotters, that's what they're known as. Yeah, are left. Four spots. But I'd love to know the stat on how many four spotters have actually gone on to win. There's been yeah. a few. Yes. There's been a few. None of late. But I remember the, the, usually the real skinny, weird-looking dude who <laughs> just looks like he's been working in a pro shop for 60 years, and he gets out there and has the week of his life and, and becomes a U.S. tour player. I'm trying to think. There's a couple of guys that won their first tour event they ever played in. I mean, U.S. tour event that yeah. they ever played in. I've got a feeling the Canadian guy that used to come down here, was mm -hmm. it Jim Benepe? Yeah. I think he won his first... U.S. tour event. Yeah. She, that I is think correct. It's Chicago. A member at Huntingdale, Cameron Borley, yeah. who used to play with uh, me a lot when I was growing up as a kid, caddied for Jim Benepe at the Vic Open yeah, when he right. won. I think he won it at Kingston Heath. He won the Vic Open at Kingston Heath. I think so. Was that when it was a huge event and oh, Greg yeah. Norman used to play in yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous how big it used to be, the Vic Open and all those tournaments. And ridiculous that Greg Norman used to turn up and play in just about all of them. Used to play a full schedule. <laughs> he used to play. You used to have to play the bare minimum, and I think it was fifteen events on the US tour to keep your card and yep. be qualified to, to win the Order of Merit. So he would play fifteen yep. on the number, win the Order of Merit, then come down here and play in eight or nine of our events. He must have. I mean, he, he was probably making. I mean, if you won the Order of Merit back in the day when he was doing that sort of stuff in the eighties, you might have got uh, a million bucks or one point five million bucks if you were Greg Norman. But he was probably making about five or six hundred thousand in appearance money, coming down and playing in all of our tournaments as well. I reckon. I'd but like good on him do, for doing it. I'd like to do it now. Sharky's got his issues with Instagram at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
we we talked about how long before he goes naked. Well, he's ticked that yeah. box now. Yeah, we did talk about that. I, I it was, it was next, coming though, wasn't it? He was warming up to it. I think the next step is full frontal. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shark. We don't want to see the fin anytime soon, Shark. Leave what's, it alone. What's the next step after full frontal? Well, I is saw that him, the amateur scene. <laughs> I saw him the other day. <laughs> I saw the shark the other day. And he was walking with his dad. I, he, yes. His dad was in in the car. You so, know, the, as you get yeah, older, you, yes. The George the little, Costanza. Little you know, scooter, when the, yeah, he's in I the scooter, yeah. and he was walking down next to his dad. That was a lovely photo. I, I, I really like that sort of stuff. And. Greg was fully dressed at the time, too. Yeah, we had shorts on, and they were short shorts. I think my point was going to be this, though, Marco. <laughs> yes. I want to do a, pro- a show one night. We go back and look at Norman's mm. old results. Oh, yeah, let's do that. And From how 86. many events he played in, because, you know... We, we sometimes break, whinge mate. about players not coming back from America these days. And, and two events is too much. I can't fit it into my schedule. Mm. This bloke put us on the map mm. in more ways than one. Financially, yeah. he, he, he was not because he wasn't necessarily the greatest Australian player of all time. Some would say mm. Peter Thompson was. I would say probably Greg Norman I was. I think right? Greg Norman is. Yeah. But from a commercial standpoint, this bloke... It was unbelievable what he did for us in the oh, 80s and 90s. Yeah, it's not ridiculous. He was, people forget, he was Tiger Woods before Tiger yeah. Woods was Tiger Woods. Yes. Now, I remember going, well, the first US Masters I went to was in 2002 and I was doing some work for Channel 9. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, like, 2002, the shark's done. He was he was cooked. Yeah. Absolutely cooked. And this was going to be, I think it was going to be his last ever Masters was that particular year. I think he got in somehow, I think he got in, not long after, it might have been when he, you know, when he came second or third at the British Open. I think he got in okay. that year, so that ended up yeah, being right. his last ever Masters. But in two thousand and two, uh, it was also it, Arnold Palmer had two uh, send offs at Augusta. He had one in two thousand and two. He had another <laughs> one in two thousand and four. <laughs> but it was a send off for Arnold Palmer. It was going to be Greg's last one, mm. and I couldn't believe that. Now Tiger Woods was, you know, he'd won like the Tiger Slam and everything. Yeah, yeah. That year. Uh, the biggest crowd on Thursday, or actually on Wednesday, thir- excuse me, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and yep. Friday yep. was Arnold Palmer. Mm-hmm. He was playing on the opposite side to Greg Norman. Mm-hmm. So the second biggest crowd was Greg Norman. Really? And the third biggest crowd was Tiger. That's how big Tiger Woods was. Uh, we all loved him, mm. but I think we misjudge how much he meant to America. As well, yeah. and they re- they really took him in, and yeah. and you know that was the first time that I understood why he is basically an American. He's like he's an Australian American, and yep. he tries very hard. He loves his Australian heritage and his dad and everything else. But he was so loved in yeah. America mm. that I think that must have been a very easy decision. He always said he was going to come back, though, didn't he? Yep. He always said he would. <laughs> I wonder if that, <laughs> I wonder if he and Kiki all move back to. You know, he might buy Paul Hogan's joint Did you think? at some stage. Come back and live there. I used to wonder why he was wearing that Akubra. Mm. Do you think he pulled it off? Like, yep. it's really hard to look cool in, no. a, in a golf Akubra. Impossible. A white golf Akubra. Imagine if someone did it today. We'd throw, he, if someone turned up, if someone turned up, let's just say Kevin Kisner turned <laughs> Kevin, up. right? Monty. No, not Monty. Let's not talk about Monty. Let's Jordan say Patrick Steve. Reed. Let's say Patrick yeah, Reed. Yeah. He turns up in an Akubra. Do we need more reason to dislike Patrick Reed? No, nah, we well, he's do. a bad person. Hang on a second. I'll keep right. going. Let's, say, let's go with Graham Dulé, right? Yes, there you go. Yes. He's harmless. Yep. He's a harmless dude. Good swing. Fused the back, Graham Dulé. But really? Yeah, he does. Took him, he had the same operation that Tiger did. Took him a long time to get back. But Tiger's cooked anyway. Doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, Graham Dulé. If he turned up and started wearing a Cooper's on the golf course, mm. I get the feeling the crowd would throw rocks at him. <laughs> so when you ask, <laughs> did Greg Norman pull it off? Yes, he's the only one who could. Could could we get the shark on one night if yeah. we wrote him a nice letter? I know. Mark can, from uh, no, he'd North come on. Baldwin is he knows. asking. I reckon we could. I reckon we could. You know him quite well. I half knew him back I know in the him day. A little bit. What's that? I know him a tiny bit. Oh, no. To tell the truth, at the President's Cup, you were walking around with your students at uh, Royal Melbourne. Yep. And I think you might have asked Craig Parry. He says, is that Craig Spence over there? 
Yeah. Who was it? Was it Cameron, Cameron Ferguson? He Cameron asked. Ferguson. Yep. And Camo said, "Yeah, that is." And he came over to you and said, "Craig Spence," and gave you a big handshake. Question. Yeah. Can I tell you my my one and only Greg Norman story when yep. I qualified that year in '99? Mm -hmm. um, when you we all played a practice round together, um, I, I I half knew him just because he played so much in Australia in the '90s. Yep. Um, and I was having a putt on the putting green. He came over. And like I was surprised you knew my name. He said, "But hey, Mark, well done in qualifying." Yeah. Yeah. And sat there and just, just said, "What? What did you shoot?" And blah 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 blah. And he, he was just so good. And he was like that to a lot of people. Yeah. He was like that to a lot of. But you know, he didn't have to do that. He was always nice to me. He he's clearly still yep. remembers you. Yeah. To guys like Adam Scott and Jason Day and you know some of the other kids coming through, he was fantastic to them. And as one of our blokes on your golf tour that I came on, yeah. who said to Sharky to his face, the reason I love you, Sharky, is you're not vanilla, mate. You're not <laughs> vanilla. He said that voice, did he? <laughs> did he? Except he dropped a couple of F-bombs in front of it and after it. <laughs> and it was beautiful. The shark loved it. Uh, I bet he did. We'll, we'll talk about that one night. But all right, Justin Thomas. Yeah, I want to talk about this character. Yep. Three wins he's had on tour this year, plus a major. I reckon one of those wins might have been a World Golf Championship event as well. He won in Malaysia. I'll check that out. So he's had four wins, one yep. of those in major, shot 59 <laughs> during the year. And when he, when you watch him swing, mm. I don't see him trying to mm. – you know what I mean? He's not trying to do anything. Yeah. So with you – and simple. And you, yeah. And look, now you – this is what you do for a living. You, yep. you look at swings. Yep. You get kids in who are, are good young players and you try to turn them into superstars. Yep. So I know that you watch a lot of swings. Yep. This question was asked of me today and I didn't really know because there's two different swings and two different reasons for liking both. Adam Scott, Justin Thomas. Who's got a better swing? Well, I looked at Thomas's swing closer today. Yeah. And there's things I like about his swing better than... Adam Scott. Like what? And I, I said on the phone to you today, I think it might be a better swing than Adam Scott. Since I looked at it more, I think Scotty's is a better action all round. Yeah. But, Marco, when you look at power, this is something that I've, as I've coached more, I've learnt more, right? Mm. And, and some people might say, yeah, duh, no kidding, yeah. right? But Actually, just hang on a second. 9, yeah. 9 if you've got a view of who has the better swing, Adam Scott or Justin Thomas, give mm. us a yell, 9, 4, 2, 9, 11, But really powerful swings... His his body lines, and you see this with Brooks Kepka as well, yeah. but, but his angles, and by this I mean when he gets to the top of his swing, people, if you can imagine, he is in a really athletic, tilted forward from the hips, yeah. over his toes, ready to just explode. Right? Massive shoulder turn. Huge shoulder turn. Clubs beautifully balanced at Perfect. the top. It's just in go mode. And, and Rory's got it. Yeah. All these really good athletic, strong movements have it. Where they just, they use the ground. What I'm trying to say is he uses the ground. Can you explain the using the ground? Yep. It's a term I've been hearing for 10 years. If, I don't really understand it, but I know a lot of players, it's almost a thought that they have these days. How do you use the ground when you swing the golf club? Well, if you imagine someone, if you, think of someone with a great setup, right? Who's someone who you think sets up beautifully cool. over the ball? Well, I think Justin Thomas does. Yeah. And I think Jason Day does. I, yep. think, I think they're the two exactly. best setups in the business. And would you say that their weight is forward in their toes as they're over the ball? As they're, as they're, um... Yeah, I think they're light-heeled. I think their heels are on the ground, but very light. Well, if you see someone who goes back into their heels when they swing backwards. So if, if everyone's imagining a golf swing and they're down the line or behind as they swing back, mm. people whose hips and so forth flatten off and their, and their weight goes back in yeah. their heels... They don't use the ground very well, Marco, because they're not in a strong position. They actually, like Bernard Langer was one of the few that was actually able to move forward on his downswing and, and yeah. capture and capture the right position again on the way down. But he wasn't. It, no, he had a bad swing. He wasn't super powerful though, right? No, he wasn't. He, 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 as wasn't a young, as a young man, he yeah. was powerful. Yeah. But I think now, I, I don't think he'd classify him as a, well, he's 60. Even his 40s. In his 40s, he wasn't a powerful golfer. But I would say someone who uses the ground well is someone who is, is forward in their toes mm. more. 
as if they're ready to, you know, the same position you would jump or, yeah. or return serve in tennis from. Yeah. You're not back on your heels, eh? You, no. Your hips aren't flat. What you just said there is a really good picture mm. of what a setup should be. If, if you are at home at the moment, I want you to get in a position to where you're going to jump as high as you possibly can. Yeah. So arms on the side, you bend your knees a little bit, and you're just about to start. That's the perfect athletic position yep. that you'd love to be. And that's why I like I reckon Jason Day is in that spot. So mm. do you think do you think who's got the better setup between Adam Scott and Justin Thomas? I think Justin Thomas might. I think it's even better. And it's when you look at someone with a great setup, you think that doesn't look hard. It looks easy, it looks simple, but mm. not many people because he's because he's he's not super tall, but he's lean and athletic and he has the has a nice straight back without mm. without Without pulling his shoulders down yeah, too much or anything yeah. like that, like it's it's subtle but it's it's great structure to it, you know. Yeah. Well, if you imagine a skeleton, and it's just tilted beautifully forward from the hips, you know, yeah. and it's nice straight back. Arms hang, Marco. Yeah, beautiful. The arms hang from the yep. in front of the body, so that you know yeah. it's just. It's a beautiful still backswing as well. I think all the best, like Jason Day, he he moves the club halfway back, and it doesn't look like he's. Heads moved a whisker. Same with Adam Scott and same with Justin Thomas. The, re the reason, the two things I love about both swings, I think Adam Scott looks like it's a repeating swing. Yes. But I love the fact that JT's, the very first move down, I think Justin Thomas's shaft gets online yeah. really early and yep. stays online yep. where I think the first part of Adam's swing, the club doesn't, it doesn't get online quickly. No. I don't think so. So, uh, and the other thing, the other thing, he I, tries I, harder, Jason Day to hit it. Yeah, I think Justin Jason Thomas. does. Yeah, and I think that Justin Thomas, he looks like he's not thinking as much mm. as as our guys Scott and Day. Let's take a couple of phone calls while we can. Yep. Phil's in Bayswater. G'day, Phil. Evening, gents. When you're off fifteen, you'd take either just for a bit of content. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you take? I, I've always liked Scotty. I think it's easy for the mud golfer like myself to probably replicate. So I've always been a Scotty fan, but there's some really good points about this bloke. He's just smoked it this year. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. It looks like he just it looks like he I think they all do it, but Justin, you can see him in his practice swings, he's he makes up his mind in his practice swing what he wants to do. And then he just basically walks in and lets rip. It's beautiful. Thanks, Phil. Matt's in Cheltenham. G'day, Matt. Matty. Uh, good evening, boys. How are you? Yeah, we're well, Matty. Good, Excellent. Um, okay, so I reckon I've thought about this for a little bit. And um, so Adam Scott's is basically the, um, well, the repeating 2000s version of uh, Tiger Swing. Yeah. When he was talking about Butch. Yep. And it really hasn't evolved much because it never had to. It was just really good. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty, but not always effective. Justin Thomas looks like the um, the fact is um, his dad and his granddad were PGA pros, and he was just born to do this. It's so natural, and he's just he just walks up and smashes it, and it looks mm. like he just knows what he's going to do. And it's there's there's no mechanics about it. It's like you mm. was yeah. It's like if you if you were an alien and you dropped down on Earth and you said you know how do you play cricket? You look at Mark War and go yep like that. Yeah. Good on you, man. I, I like the way you think of this. Good analogy. Um, the other thing I loved about, and I'll get to you, Benny, in just a tick. Uh, the other thing I loved about Justin Thomas, um, his, the way he putted in the last day, the rhythm of repetition that he used was so good. Mm. You know, he had a lot of important putts in that back nine. Yeah. And he didn't make out that any of those putts were any more important than any putt he'd had all week. Yep. Which I thought was just like the putty head on seventeen on the last day. Yeah, it's almost like the camera people yeah. and the commentators thought that hey, this is a really important putt. Yeah. Let's not go back there for a while because clearly he's going to you know treat it like it's the most important putt of the whole tournament and take a little extra time. But, but they didn't. went back to him and he didn't. Yeah, and that is you know that I reckon that's probably instilled from a father mm. who was probably taught by a PGA professional. Mm who became a PGA professional and taught that to his son because that has been something that's been intrinsic in golf mm. for so long. It's one of the real basic core things that you learn as a professional. The putt that you have on the third hole yeah. on round two from 20 feet, yeah. that putt's rhythm of repetition mm -hmm. should be exactly the same as the most important putt on the tournament. Yeah. That was at 17. And he trusted his rhythm of repetition. Yep. And he pulled the trigger and the thing went in.
And if you've been watching golf like you and I have for a long time, mm-hmm. that was a thing of beauty. Yeah, it was. It was, mate. It was. Uh, by the way, tonight we're live on Facebook. Head to facebook.com slash SCN 1116. You can check out the 99 Australian Masters Champ. Just a quick one. Yeah. We'll all talk about the great shots, like this iron shot he hit into 17. Yeah. Right? But that up and down on 16 from the trap with the water behind, oh. and it's yes. it's, it's all carry too. It's not like yes. a dump and run shot. It's it's carry <laughs> yep. to the back part of the green. Yes. I, I would be queasy about that bunker shot coming down the stretch, knowing I've got a two-shot lead, yeah? Yeah. And he gets that up and down. I, I thought that was wonderful yeah, effort. Brave. And he's not known for his short game necessarily. He's no, a ball striker. Really, yeah. Good short game, but... Yeah. I thought that was an impressive up and down. Yeah, and the putt was the same. Yeah, we talk about the 17, but that putt, the rhythm of repetition with that putt, yep. that was the most important Beautiful part of putt. the tournament at that stage. Yep. And, you know, again, he doesn't take extra time, no. just does his routine. It's exactly the same effort that he would put into any putt, and it was magnificent. Benny's been hanging on in Parkdale. G'day, Benny. G'day, Mark. It's Park. How you going, boy? Yeah, well, well hey, Benny. Benny boy. That's good. That's good. I would have to say Adam Scott's swing is better. Yeah. Based on, what do you reckon, Benny? Repetition. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, I mean, if you look at it over the years, I think 09 to 011, it has changed a little bit if you watch it in real slow-mo. Mm. Um, I think the 09 swing was a, a little bit better. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think he's just more textbook in the way of how most coaches would all have taught for so long. Yeah. But you're right, and also Matt was right when he was talking earlier about Justin Thomas's swing. It does look very natural. Yeah, it doesn't look like he thinks as much, does it, Benny? Mm. No, he doesn't. And and I think Scotty's, you know I mean? Yeah. Swing is great, but the biggest thing that lets him down is the mm. match stick, and we all know that. Yeah. Good on you, Benny. Thanks for chiming in, mate. Nice to hear your voice back on Chasing Birdies. Can I say, Marco, when's the last time we had a tournament with this set of swings coming down the stretch? Louis Eusthausen, yeah. Matsuyama, oh. um, Justin Thomas, yeah. um, what's Patrick Kisner? Reed. Kisner. What, Patrick Reed. What about good golf swing? Molinari, the Molinari, number one, the the number one repeater in golf. What a That's, repeater he that is. He's amazing. Six of the world's best swings. Now, normally yeah. you get. Well, throwing like Kisner, throwing Graham yeah, Dulay as well. Normally, you get you get a, a Brooks Kepka type action, yeah, or, a, right. or a Bubba, or a Sergio Garcia. Sergio, yeah. or, like You're they right. were textbook actions. <laughs> Matsuyama's one of the they were seriously impressive golf swings. So you, you have to ask: Is the golf course suited to better ball strikers or consistency? Yeah, well, ma- well, maybe. Well, look, Rory Rory McIlroy, one of the great ball hitters we've ever seen. Yeah. His record at Quail Hollow is number one by that far. It wasn't funny. And this week, again, uh, you know, one of the best hitters of a golf ball has won at Quail Hollow in Justin Thomas. Hey, I do want to talk about Matsuyama. I saw some stuff with his putting, and I know that you saw some stuff with his chipping yep. as well. Uh, so we might do that straight after the break. Chasing birdies, thanks to St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. And we're going to catch up with Mark Hayes from Golf Australia. You can read all his stuff at golf.org.au and he'll be brought to you by the Kerr Lewis Golf Club. Hungry for sport with Kevin Bartlett. Pretty vernacular has gone to another level in 2017. Danny Frawley spent the morning trying to understand what clubs have in their war chest. You know what a war chest is? The pirates have them. Yes, that have suits of armour in it, that have swords. Guns. Can someone actually uh, send in a photo of this war chest that clubs have got? A little bit of extra room in the Surica. Oh, no. We've got a war chest. Why can't we just get back to talking footy? Join me tomorrow along with Greg Venom Denham. Taking your calls plus the list manager, Terry Wallace, and the buzz, Johnny Ralph, and his famous three stings. Hungry for sport with Kevin Bartlett. Setting the agenda weekdays 9 till 12 for the Royal Melbourne Hospital Home Lottery. You could be living mortgage-free in beautiful Glen Iris. On 1116 SEN, Melbourne's home of footy. Join the fun of the run on Sunday, August 27 at Q Boulevard, the course that made Robert De Costella a world champion. The Nostra Homes De Costella Run to Mend Minds raises valuable funds for the Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre to continue their world-leading work to help mental illnesses. You can run 5, 10 or 15k courses and for the kids, there's a run-ready activity program. Push a friend, run it yourself or just enjoy a great walk. 
register to enter now at decostellarun.com.au. Volks Fest is now on at Kevin Dennis Volkswagen. Heavily discounted demos in stock and price to clear. Plus, score some incredible drive-away deals on commercial vehicles. Like the powerful Amarok V6 Highline 4x4 from just $59,990 drive away. Or the Amarok 4x2 Auto from just $38,990 drive away. Plus, Volkswagen's unbeatable five-year unlimited kilometre warranty to approved applicants. Offers are strictly limited, so don't miss out. Visit us at kevindennisvw.com.au. LMCT 175. If you've worked in more than one job, chances are you've got more than one super fund. All charging fees that are eating away at the balance, leaving less for you. That's where Michael Roach Financial Solutions can help. Michael will hunt down every super fund in your name, including lost and forgotten funds, combine the proceeds, and advise you on the best super plan for you. And it only takes a phone call. So call Michael on 1300 80 58 00, or go to the website at michaelroach.com.au. Authorised representatives of AMP Financial Planning Propriety Limited. Values. We all hold them. Care about them. Some drive us, some inspire us, and they can say a lot about us. At Lapine Funerals, we understand them and care about them too. Because every day we're privileged to help families treasure them, honour them, and remember them in those they love. Lapine Funerals, celebrating the values you treasure most. Visit lapinefunerals.com.au. G'day, it's Andy Maher here. I've just picked up my copy of this month's Inside Football and it's a ripping read. The race for a top eight spot is rapidly coming down to some fine differences and the luck of the draw. We break down each contender's game style and list who they do and don't want to play in September. Is there a simple solution to ease congestion and improve scoring? Footy once conducted a 33-season experiment and the stats from that era are clear. And Mark Choco Williams opens up about his life and times in footy. Grab your copy today, it's on sale now. Saturday afternoon football. Collingwood. And kicks the centre half. Oh! Oh! It's oh! Fun. Geelong. Goal bounce for Menzel. It does. And he finds it out of the air. Live from the MCG at 1pm on 11.16 SEM. Melbourne's home of footy. On 11.16 SEM, Chasing Birdies with Mark Allen and Craig Spence. For St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. And Mark Hayes will give us the Golf Australia wrap pretty soon. He's not too far away tonight. We're live on Facebook. Head to facebook.com slash SEN1116 and you'll see the 99 Australian Masters champion in Craig Spence. Hey, before we talk about Hideki, uh, and not long before we get to Mark Hayes, Couple off the SMS. USA boys so mentally strong. I agree with that. They are. One, yep. they're playing at home base, which helps. But two, you and I both know their high school golf, their kids' golf, when I say kids' golf, seven and eight year old tournaments, they're just bred to play tournament golf, aren't they? They're different. Their competition structure, tournament structure, tournament is structure. phenomenal. They, you could go to a little tournament in Outback, Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. They'll have a they'll have a leaderboard up the size of yeah. you know this yeah. building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. When, when when's the last time you had went to a, a golf tournament here, an amateur one where they had tournaments up like that? Oh, uh, maybe tournament. maybe the Riverside Cup, yes. you know, which is the yes. best amateur tournament that we have pretty much in the country. Not many. Not many. They, they'd probably be at the Australian amateurs as well. But this is the other thing. They're taught putting, yeah, the right way. We teach ball striking here mm. really well, I think, for our small yeah, numbers. Yep. But, gee, they teach putting well over there. They don't try to overthink it in America. They just hold putts. Yeah. No, they're brilliant. They, they, they're, they are tournament players. They're not golfers who learn to swing the club. So it's great. Hey, uh, off the SMS, didn't the great Jack Nicholas say that setup is the only time in your complete control, as in not moving? So why shouldn't it be 100% correct? That's Agree. What, that's the way he thinks is still astounding, and that is, I can remember that. And where does Louis Oosthuizen rank? Uh, he seems to flush it all the time. That's from Mike. So, would you take Louis or JT's or Adam Scott? Let's whack Louis Oosthuizen in there. I think I'm still taking JT because there's that sense where he's not thinking as hard. I'd take you. Oh, I'd take any of them, but I'd take um, Adam Scott out of the three only because. Um, he's done it for so long. And yeah. So is so is Louis. Yeah, so you is know? Louis. He's just, you know, Scotty's maybe a little bit better. Dale Lynch, Dale, Dale Lynch ranks Louis Oosthuizen as the best. He's the best. Yeah, Dale. He, Dale loves that. 
effortless, effortless, effortless you know. rip. And the ball flight is apparently something to behold. Yep. Well, I've seen him warm up a couple of times. It wasn't that impressive to tell you the truth, but when you watch him on the telly, it does. It looks unbelievable. Hey, Hideki, I want to talk about this guy. Right. Had a win last week. Uh, went to number two in the world. Went to number one on the FedEx Cup. Well, he's been there for a while, actually, in the FedEx Cup. He's been number one. Uh, still is, mind you. JT moves up to number two. Um, if he won this week, he's going to be the first Japanese player to win a major. And if he won this week, he would have got to number one in the world. Right. Which meant he was going to be the first Japanese player to get to number one in the world as a 25-year-old, mind you. So uh, an amazing um, pedigree. He won the Asia Pacific Amateur Championship, the first two of them. Yep. So he's been around a lot. And then, yeah, now he's not the number two player in the world. So Gun. Yeah, a, a gun. Um, you know, some of the close-ups that the, I think the broadcast was magnificent too, by the way. But some of the close-ups of his six-foot putts that missed. Yep. He pointed the line on top of the ball, mm -hmm. dead straight. Yep. Uh, and you know, when you have a putt on the practice screen, how your putter goes back and through, yep. and the actual toe releases when you're putting well on mm -hmm. the practice putting green. But I think what people do when they get steery is they try and keep the blade square on the follow-through. Yep. And I reckon there was a couple of times where they showed the six-footer. The club face was probably trying to stay open, right. if not opening through impact. And you could see that line on the top of his ball, instead of the pure roll where the line just tumbles over, straight off the face, yeah. the ball, the line went crooked. Yeah, It was a real sight. It just looked to me like he was... He wasn't steering trusting. It? Yeah, he was steering it. He, it that, anytime you steer, it's because you do not trust what you're doing. Can that, you know, I mean, he's got to oh, number yeah. two in the world. That's at that level. And then, like, he's a beautiful putter. He's, he, you know, he's, he's not as as pure a putter as Spieth. But when he's rolling, he's he's fantastic to watch. How, how do you stop doing that, do you think? I'm asking you. Yeah. Well, look, so one of the things that – some drills that you get guys who are not releasing the putter very well is to do one-handed yeah. putting yep. just with your right hand and just yep. to – the other thing is, if you ever to, were to roll the ball, you wouldn't you wouldn't try to push the palm of your hand towards the target. No, you wouldn't. You would you would allow the you would allow your hand. Yeah, that's right. To release. Yeah. Especially if you were side onto it, you yeah. know. And the putter's the same way. You just you just allow the putter to to swing, right? Therefore, yeah, that's the right. release happens quite naturally. But that's right. You mentioned that to me today, and I remembered I had Matsuyama some video footage of him chipping. Yeah. Because I took some video of him when I watched him duff a basic chip at the British Open. Yeah. And I thought, number two in the world, he duffed it halfway to the hole. And so what did you see? Well, interesting. What he does with the chip, with his chipping action, or the one that I filmed, yeah. is he, again, the club, the club head, he tries to keep it going straight towards the target. He doesn't allow the Do club. Do the hands go around to the left? The hands go left. And the club continues in a straight line at the target. What now, the hell is he doing? For our non-golfers up there, out there, they're going to be going, what the hell are these guys talking about? So that's impossible to do almost. If your hands go left, the club can't keep going straight. The only way you can do it is if you're actually being told to hold it off. Yeah. Yuck. Right? So there's a lot of people out there that teach, have the hands in front, trap it, and then hold it off. That's not being taught very much anymore, Marco. That is... No. That is basically... No, that's no good. Everyone's using the bounce. No one's bit. doing that much anymore. And you don't have to be a huge handsy releaser either. No, it's not right. Because Peter Fowler never used to use his hands very much in his short game. No. Are you, are you a lagger? Do you like a little bit of lag? When I teach, I do because it makes people hold the club lightly. Great. Yeah, softless. Softness. It has to be soft. So if you're holding it softly, the club should there should be a tiny little bit of lag when you chip, and that helps you have a bit of forward lean with the shaft when you make contact which is nice, and then you let the club release after that. Yes, you, you should. You should. The, the club, if you can imagine the handle of the club, yeah. it should point roughly at your centre throughout mm. the, the chipping action, right? So yeah. if you're holding it off, the grip points way out past your left hip. Or we, might, we might come back to this in a tick because yep. if, you've got a, if you've got a chipping question or a putting question, Give us a yell after we speak with Mark Hayes. Yep. Uh, and we might even do it a little bit uh, maybe towards the end of the program. But Mark Hayes, thanks to Kerr Lewis Golf Club. You can read his stuff on golf.org.au. Get your handicap there as well. Has joined us in his usual spot on Chasing Birdies. G'day, Hazy. G'day, fellas. I feel like I've dropped two or three shots off my handicap. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it translates 
Well, through the radio, mate. Hopefully, maybe you're watching us on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash SCN 1116. I've, I've seen some I'm not, footage. But I'm, actually, I'm standing in my lounge room practicing one-handed putting and, and uh, all these things that you're talking about. It makes a lot of sense, so I hope everyone's listening. That's we, why the claw works when you putt, because it's very yes. easy for the for the putter face to actually roll over when you use the claw. And I've seen Hazy Chip. He almost killed a BIS <laughs> athlete chipping, so you need some help, Hazy. We've got to somehow fill that into our broadcast every single week. <laughs> hey, Hazy, what is happening in the world of Golf Australia? <laughs> well, I rang Blake Collier today and he reminded me of that exact same video. <laughs> so, uh, and I rang Blake Collier, boys, because um, he's one of 11, a record 11 that we spoke about last week, Australian players at the US Amateur Championship. And today uh, he was three over through uh, 13 holes at Riviera and looking up at the cut being four over and he three putted the next two holes, one for a bogey, one for a double bogey, and all of a sudden he was six over, and oh. he's thinking, I'm, I'm cooked. And he's yeah. made a up and down from the sand on 16, the past three, and he's made an eagle from the left rough on 17, and a five-foot putt for a birdie on the 18th, and he's one of four Australians to get through. Kid from Metropolitan, a fantastic effort. Yeah, good four time. Aussies through to the final 64 at, uh, at Riviera starting tomorrow in the match play, and that's an absolutely phenomenal achievement. Dylan Perry... Uh, he's going great guns, Travis Smythe and Shea Wolves Cobb alongside him. Is it fair to say, Hazy, Dylan Perry is almost the best player, a young Australian player at the moment. He is just killing it wherever he goes in the world at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, spot on. Um, if you'd asked me that question at any stage in the last 18 months, I wouldn't have had him in the top eight, ten players maybe. Yeah. Uh, but he's come on in absolute leaps and bounds. He, he was involved in a couple of really tense matches before he left Australia uh, a couple of months ago on this big, long, extended tour. He was the guy who had a chance to win the Interstate Series for New South Wales and didn't get it done. And I thought, I wonder what that's going to have an effect on him in the long run. He's gone to the UK, finished runner-up in the amateur. He went really well at St Andrews uh, Lynx Trophy. And he's just ripping it up in the States. And now here he is again, Australia's highest qualifier in the USM. And He's just going great guns. He's clearly the hottest player of our amateurs at the moment. He's just uh, he's going really, really well. And Hazy, how often do we see a guy not win his first major that he should have and he bounces back and gets his next chance? And we might mm. see that from Dylan having gone. Did he lose in the final of the British Amateur or the semi-final? Yeah. No, the final. Yeah, and he the was final. Actually, I reckon he was three up with five to play and Correct. lost on the 38th hole. I reckon he might have been four up with five to play. Well, yeah, it was it was pretty gut wrenching, and you know he, he along with the interstate series, two pretty big moments in a young golfer's life um, to have putts to win those two things from an Australian amateur's point of view, and yeah, it's outstanding to see him bounce back like this. He's he's made a pretty stern stuff, and as you rightly say, and you were talking about uh, you know Matsuyama, he's he's got a you know he, he bounces back. He's had these disappointments, but he'll bounce back and. Um, I think Dylan Perry's probably in the same category. We'd hope he can be a quarter as good a player as Matsuyama. Yeah, it could be a turning point, Hazy. It could be a turning point. Hey, the girls are playing uh, in uh, in Kuyonga as well. Yeah, I went over and had my first ever look at Kuyonga yesterday, Mark. First we ever? Went, my first time inside those gates. And you I'm me. What do you think? Abs- absolutely stunning course. Uh, it was belting down rain, unfortunately, but it didn't stop me sort of getting out there and having a look. And I was just blown away by it how funky the course was and, and how in a good way, not a bad way. And uh, <laughs> just, uh, you know, the variety and the, the holes, the proximity of the holes to the clubhouse is going to be a fantastic spectator course. And we're taking the Women's Australian Open back there for ISPS Hander in February February uh, next year. Um, already announced Hana Zhang, the defending champion, which is a great get given she's walked off the LPGA tour. You've got to say her name right, though, Hazy. Yes. Hana Zhang, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like a motorbike. That's the way she describes it. <laughs> she's in a real character. Well, she, she, when we were telling how much energy she had last year, we, she called herself the Hana Jizer. The Hana Jizer. I love yeah. it. Yeah, she's, she's great. She's great. So hopefully we're going to get a whole stack of the world's top 10 players this year. Things are really looking promising. Uh, and on that course, wow, it just, just blew me away. It was fantastic. Uh, last one from me, Hazy. Uh, Minwoo Lee didn't perform as well as we'd have liked, uh, though mm. he's coming home with a lot of putters in his bag, I hear. He's been <laughs> raiding <laughs> he? he's been raiding ties and putters and all sorts of stories all coming right. out of Twitter. eBay, we, watch out. Uh, <laughs> well, he, he did the, um, the exact opposite to Blake Collier today, Spence. He actually needed to par the last to get into the playoff uh, uh, for the... 
64 and he took a bogey up the last. So he's oh. sort of fallen on his sword a little bit there. It's going to hurt him a fair bit. I think he, he hasn't done what he really wanted to do in his trip this time. And I reckon he'll come back home and really grind. So that'll be good for him. Yeah. Good on you, Hazy. Hey, mate, thanks for joining us. We love you on Chasing Birdies, mate. Um, and uh, we look forward to reading your stuff at golf.org.au, checking out our handicaps there as well. And also, uh, we've got to get back to Kerr Lewis at some size, Craig, and uh, have another go yes. around because one of the best <laughs> golf courses we'll ever see. Love it. Thanks, Hazy. Good on, good on you, boys. Thanks a lot. Mark Hayes there from Golf Australia. And like I said, check your handicap these days on golf.org.au. Chasing Birdies, thanks to St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. And I really believe that. It is an absolute cracker. The sportsbet.com.au quiz coming up next. 9429 11, 16 to get on. Someone's going to get a $100 crack. Once you get on, don't go off because we're just going round and round and round. Friday Night Football. Hello here and following the Superbox at six, it's Adelaide and the Sydney Swans from the Adelaide Oval. It's one versus five as the two form teams of the competition go head to head. Are the Swans serious about finishing top four? Join me, Matty Granlin, Gary Lyon and Danny Frawley for all the action. He's going now 33-10 from set shot. Don't worry about passing the ball, he can kick it. Then Saturday from one, after crunch time, it's the Pies and the Cats from the G. Got a bounce for Menzel, it does! And he follows it out of the air! And his arm charges up, pumps it to the big crowd! 11-16 SEN, Melbourne's home of footy. SEN football for Boost, the great tasting vitamin boost. Hi, Jeremy Howe here, defender for the Collingwood Football Club. It can be hard standing your ground on the footy field and harder yet leaping above the pack to outmark your competition. That's why I choose INC Sports Nutrition. It helps me build mass, retain muscle and recover faster. INC has a complete range of informed sports improved nutrition. So for serious results, get INC Sports Nutrition for a great price only at Chemist Warehouse. Train hard, live large with INC, the official sports nutrition of the Collingwood Football Club. Barry's a builder. He's his own boss thanks to TME training. Con works in construction. He works for himself thanks to training through TME. Sam works for the man. Not enough training, you see. Sad Sam. Don't be a sad Sam. Get efficient face-to-face -face training in Certificate 4 and Diploma of Building through the Management Edge and become your own boss. Go to tme.edu.au or contact us on 1300 778787. RTO 3927. There you are, happily Googling away when something catches your eye. Oi, over here. you Have a look. A website that looks so slick and is so easy to use, it draws you in. Have a look. Over here. Have a look. This website was created by havealook.com.au from as little as $495. If you need a high-ranking, lead-generating, awesome website that you can easily update yourself... Have a look, have a look, have a look, have a look. Then have a look at havealook.com.au and we'll come to you obligation-free. Have a look websites. Great websites. Fast. Hello. Frank Walker from National Tiles. This week only, National Tiles is slashing all outdoor tiles by a massive 25%. Yes, this week only, save 25% off all outdoor tiles. Absolutely no exceptions. Tile your verandas, patios, paths, driveways and or garages with National Tiles outdoor tiles and save a massive 25%. This week only. Go to nationaltiles.com.au now for details. Red, white, we've all got different tastes and opinions. Get on the SEN open line. Call 9429 1116 or SMS 0433 98 Thanks to Get Wines Direct. Online wines made easy and the best deals every day. On 1116 SEN, Chasing Birdies with Mark Allen and Craig Spence for St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. And tonight we're live on Facebook. Head to facebook.com slash SEN 1116. We'll probably be doing it most weeks from now on. And Chasing Birdies thinks it's St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. It is an absolute ripper. It's time for the sportsbet.com.au quiz. A $100 betting voucher to give away. Dazza, Rob and Matt are our three online tonight. Dazza, first up. G'day, Daz. G'day, Marco. G'day, Craig. How are you? Good, Daz. Just call him Spark, Daz. Everybody <laughs> else does. Right, you know how to play. You all set? Yep. Dazza, Justin Thomas obviously won the PGA at Quail Hollow. What did he yep. shoot in the first round? Uh, the toughie. Maybe yeah. 71. 
Good try. Bad luck, Daz. Don't don't go anywhere. We're just going round and round. We might get back to you, Daz. Rob in McKinnon. G'day, Rob. Marco and Spark, how are you? Yeah, good. Robbie. Thanks, Rob. Do you know the answer? Uh, two over, 73. Well done. It's well good, done. isn't it? Yeah, Rob doesn't miss a trick, mate. How many events has JT won this season, Rob? Uh, four. That is correct. Going easy. Question number three. Where is JT now ranked in the FedEx Cup standings? Uh, second. Oh, yeah, so gee, that is good. The decky number one. Couldn't get past the decky. This is it. This is the money shot. You just, you just gave away the... Rob, did I really? who was number one in those standings? <laughs> oh, no. oh, I wonder who. Hey, Dickie. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sorry, on. Matt. Sorry, Dazza. Oh, well. But that's you would have got it anyway, Rob, wouldn't you? The cookie, oh, I I that. Yeah, the cookie that crumbles. <laughs> Good on you, Rob. Right, well, now we're going to the Wyndham, which, you know, after all the majors are done, it's kind of a crap event. But that's where we're going anyway. <laughs> So we got Henry. I'm a member of I'm a member of Wyndham, guys. Don't knock it. What do you mean you're a member of Wyndham? Yeah, they're a timeshare company. I've got timeshare with them, so Is that don't right? knock them. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh well. Well, well, can I'm, we rent your uh, timeshare out sometime, <laughs> Robbie? Where, where is it? Well, no, you don't get you. You can go to various places. It's world market <laughs> okay. in right. Australia. Yes, yeah, so it's a well, good it's, place, mate. A little cashy. It's still a bit of an anti climax compared to what we saw last week. Anyway, Henry Extension, yeah. fifteen bucks. Kevin Kisner doesn't smile a lot. Kevin Kisner does he? <laughs> no. Fifteen dollars. Ryan Moore, twenty-one bucks. Webb Simpson, twenty-one. Bill Haas, twenty-three. Jason Dufner, twenty-six. Bud Cawley, thirty-four. What's he doing up there? James Hahn, thirty-six. Oh, this is why, because there's not many players. Chris Shroud, forty-one bucks. Won a couple of weeks ago. Danny Lee, one of your favourites, Craig. Yeah. Forty-one dollars. Uh, Billy Horshaw, forty-one bucks. Kevin Nah, couldn't possibly, could he? Maybe this is a sort Maybe. of this is a sort of event Kevin R would win. He's a yes. Fifty one dollars. And Shane Lowry, he's going to win eventually on oh, the US tour, isn't he? He has, has to. He, has he already won? He must have won something on the US I'll tour. I'll have to look that up. I mean he must have. He's done well in World Golf Championship events. I and think. majors. In fact, I'm going with him. He's got to win at some stage. Fifty six bucks for him. Who are you gonna whack your hundred on? Bob, thanks to sportsbet.com.au. Um, I think Kisner will bounce back, guys. I think the he's, man who uh, never smiles, okay. the grumpy one. Yeah, he's a good player. I agree. I think he'll go well. He's a great swinger of the club, Rob. Go for it. I don't like him much, Rob, but I hope he wins for you. Thanks for joining us, mate. Hey, leave your details. Uh, you've got a sportsbet.com.au account, haven't you? I do. Yeah, right, righto. Eh? right. Eh? Well, uh, believe me, leave your details and the bet will be on. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Righto. Eh? Hey, we need to take a really quick break. Okay. I want to talk about Jason Day and what he did yes. on 18 in round three. Let's do it. 1116 SEN, the station you rely on when the big sports news breaks. Tuesday. Now, Bob Murphy has now his retirement. So the Bulldogs supporters, I want to thank you for always being in my corner. Josh Gibson, another retirement. I'll be hanging them up at the end of this year. You know, I've had a great career and it's been a fantastic journey. Wednesday, James Kelly has just announced his retirement at Essendon. I feel really fortunate that I've been able to come this far in my career and play for two really great clubs and had a lot of success. When the Big Sports News breaks, you'll hear it first on 1116 SEN, Melbourne's home of footy. Hi, Drew Doolan here from Sites and Stores. At Sites and Stores, we specialise in small business online solutions. If $527 seems small, then you need to call Sites and Stores to build your online presence. Sites and Stores, building small business online. After a forklift that stacks up on quality, value and productivity, Toyota Material Handling has the solution. Call your local branch for new, used or rental forklifts. 1-800-425-438 or see toyotamaterialhandling.com.au. You can't get a Rolex for a hundred bucks, and there's no way you'd get a brand new Ferrari for a couple of grand. We all know you get what you pay for. The same is true with pressure cleaners. Cheap foreign imports lack reliable muscle, but Spitwater pressure cleaners are strong, powerful, and built to last. So avoid the fakes and get a pressure cleaner that's Aussie made for tough Aussie conditions. Get a Spitwater. Call 1300 Spitwater or see spitwater.com.au. Spitwater. 
that's what it does. It's a huge weekend of finals action in the Northern Football League. The North Park NFL Women's Preliminary Finals take place at Preston City Oval on Sunday. West Preston Lakeside and Darabin lock horns as they strive for the second spot in the Division 2 Grand Final before Bendigo takes on VU Western Spurs in Division 1. The league's best junior teams are also in action with 25 Grand Finals to take place on Sunday. For fixtures and the latest news, head to nfl.org.au or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, I'm Mark O'Connor, professional painter and Monarch ambassador. Painting around the house used to mean messy hands and a big headache. But with Monarch's range of Smart Lock Mini Rollers, you can paint every nook and cranny with ease. Available in two different sizes and a variety of fabrics, the useful Smart Lock technology means no more mess or fuss. Plus, with their storage tube, you can store your wet roller for up to two weeks. Check out the new Monarch Smart Lock Mini Rollers range at Bunnings Warehouse today. On 11.16 SEM, Chasing Birdies with Mark Allen and Craig Spence for St Andrews Beach, the best public access golf course on the Australian mainland. You better believe it is. And the feature hour coming up with Mark Besto is the guest with Jeff Polden, of course. Mark, fine. A couple of SMSs. Can we start talking about AFL or rugby? This golf is total crap. Thank you for sending that in. The very next one. I don't even like golf, but gee, I love this hour. Thank you, Andy and Croy. <laughs> you can't You're please. A star. You can't please everybody. <laughs> that is for sure. Jason Dave, what did you make of him, mate, on that last hole? Well, there were two things about that shot that I'm blown away by. Right. Everyone's agreed it, it was a silly shot. Crazy. Right? Number one is that he's got no follow through. None. So his his shaft hits the tree within. A what? foot. A foot and a half, two feet. Yeah, yeah, 30 couple, centimetres. A couple of feet after the ball. 60 centimetres. So if anyone's ever tried to hit a, a big rope, rape, hook. Ro roping hook <laughs> without a follow through. Good luck. And secondly, he's standing on the pine, pine straw, yeah. as we call it in at August. Yeah, what's well, pine straw? Which is slippery. Yeah. So you're trying to hit a big, huge shaping shot with no follow through off a slippery yeah. stance. Unbelievable. Ridiculous, Unbelievable. mate. Ridiculous. Now, normally... He's in the tournament, Marco. Normally, when you are trying something risky, Craig, you look at the risk and you go, you know what, if this, if I go out to the right here and try and hook it back over that bush over there and try and or over the crowd and get it all the way back to the green, mm. if it doesn't work and I'm going this way, <laughs> it might bounce off a tree and go into those bushes. Yeah. Or if I don't get it up because I'm trying to, you know, shut the face down, it's going to go straight into those bushes. Yeah, yeah. So you go now. If it does, if it, if that happens, I'm going to make a quad. Yeah, I better not do that. It's not. Mm. It's not worth the risk. I agree. Or you could chip it out. And how often would Jason Day get up and down with an eight iron in his hands? Yeah, probably. What one in five? Well, one in six? One in seven? I like those odds. It happens. It happens. And I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind backing myself to get an. He's not going to make four the other way by any guarantee anyway, no. even if he pulls the shot off. No. That's a great point. But, but I wouldn't mind backing myself. If I can get that 8 and up and down, I'm still in this golf tournament. He's more likely to shoot 62 the next day. Yep. Oh, sorry. You're He's right. more likely to shoot 64 the next day than he was to make a par going that way. The other thing... Ridiculous. I I, the other thing that I didn't like what he said yeah. was he was worried. He was playing with Kisner, right? Yeah. Kisner was our leader. Yeah. He was worried that he was going to make a birdie and get too far away from him. Kisner! You can't. Please! The non-smiler. <laughs> yeah, it didn't you make sense. You can't play golf unless didn't it's match make play. Sense, buddy. Worrying about that. Didn't make All sense. Right. You make sense. Oh. Thanks for coming in. I love world. you here, mate, every single Wednesday. Hey, Finey, mate. I love you too, mate. I love speaking about golf on your show. May it continue for a long, long time. Mark Fine, Mark Besto, Mark Besto and Jeff Polter all coming up next. Melbourne's home of footy is always crystal clear on the SEN app, so download it now, connect to your car via Bluetooth, then press play. This